I was in Poundland today and I've not been in for a while. And I saw this head torch and I thought, well, it's just a head torch. It's, you know, this typical cob type. And then I looked at how thin it was. And I was thinking, is that going to use the 2032, you know, those lithium button cells that look like this? Because it seems so small. But it says uses three triple A's. And it does. Let me demonstrate it. This won't carry too many surprises. It goes full output. It goes medium output. Uh, and it goes strobing. And if you hold the button in for more than about four or five seconds, it goes into that SOS mode. So it's a fairly typical chip. Let's cut it out of the package and I'll show you what's really interesting about this though. I spotted it when I was putting the batteries in, which you can actually do in the packaging. It doesn't come with batteries. This is good usually. It avoids those products that you take off the shelf and they get leaky batteries in them already. So anything worthy saying in this? Uh, for eye protection, do not look directly at the light. Do not mix all the new batteries and start batteries with the correct polarity. Just the usual disclaimers, right? The first thing I should really do here, I should test it. I should put it to absolute maximum head diameter and I should test it on my huge bonds because uh, some of these don't fit. So uh, let's try this out. Binny off. Uh, it fits. It fits absolutely fine. That's good beanie back on. So to open it, you simply unhook the top like this, he said, pushing the button in the process. Can I mention it's that really annoying thing that you have to click through all the modes. But I'll click it open and it hinges down and everything is in the one side. So you've got the batteries and I have mixed batteries, rechargeable batteries. But here's the really interesting thing. The traditional cob light like this has a cob plus the separate circuit board with the battery connector and stuff like that. In this case, everything has been integrated onto the one circuit board. So I've not seen this yet. This is new to me right now. So I'm going to take this out. I'm noting that the, the screws may actually, the, that hold it in, may actually be holding it onto the contacts as well. I don't know if it's soldered. We shall find out when I pop this open. Is the circuit board going to come out itself? What if I push this? It's actually got the battery contacts um, anchored onto it. Let's whip this out, if I can. Maybe I won't. I'm not sure the way they construct this. Let's pop the, all the contact strips out. Where are my pliers? My little dinky pliers. My little dinky flowers that I was using a moment ago are missing. There they are. They're buried under stuff. Buried under 3D printing projects and other stuff. So I'll take that out. I'll take this out because I think it will just make it easier to slide the thing out. Oops. Yeah, I'm not doing very well here, am I? This is just how some of these things are. There we go. Now can I get off? You know what? There's another screw. Right, okay, that would have made a huge difference if I'd spotted that. But not to worry, it's out now. Let's try and hike it out. What do we have? We have the circuit board with the button. Looks like a, the button you'd find on a Ford remote control. In fact, many car remote controls, there's really nothing on this, is there? You've got the two soldered connections. I'm almost surprised they didn't just rely on the, uh, the circuit board pressing against the contacts for those. There is the option for what looks like a, another component across here. There's what I would guess is a resistor. Uh, and then the little generic six pin chip. Right, tell you what, let's take a closer look at this. So here's what the module looks like. It's got eight, what I'm guessing are flip chip LEDs and they're sort of mounted long ways. You can actually see that sort of shape in there. And they're controlled from a chip, which is called a YN890. And I did search the YN890. I did not find it. I found people selling it, but I did find a pin-for-pin pin compatible 
chip by YX8253. And given that YX is quite a big company, YX Electronics, they're the ones who make all the solar garden light chips. I would guess that that's probably a copy of their product. Could be wrong. But it matches the pinout and it shows the push button. The only thing different is there is a 10 microfarad capacitor shown for stability. I wonder if that's what that was for, but it was put in the wrong place, these pads here, because they are, they don't really make an awful lot of sense. But we have the button input, we have the LED and resistor, and the ratings for this are quite interesting. It gives another little schematic, which shows it driving a much bigger uh, load via a MOSFET, a P-channel MOSFET. It's using the same output that would pull to ground, but instead it's pulled up with a resistor to keep the MOSFET off. When it pulls down to ground, it switches the P-channel MOSFET on, and that then drives much bigger loads. But the data, it's rated up to 5 volts, and it gives quiescent current uh, of standby at the full 4.5 volts of 2 microamps, which is tiny. Uh, I didn't check that. I feel I should check that. I will check that, and I'll note it down below. Or I'll just pause and check that. I could do that right now, couldn't I? One moment, please. And the result is the quiescent current was so low, I couldn't even measure it. It was actually less than a microamp. Uh, other things that are worth noting, the on-state resistance at one amp of the internal MOSFET that switches LEDs is 100 milliohms, just a tenth of an ohm. The low setting is a 25% uh, duty cycle, which uh, at 230 hertz. That 230 hertz is kind of, you can see a slight flicker, but it's not that bad. Uh, it's only when you sort of swipe it that you see that. However, uh, that also explains the current readings because I took some current readings at 4.5 volts and 3.6 volts for uh, nickel metal hydride cells versus alkaline cells, fresh alkaline cells. The flashing is at 7.5 hertz. Uh, the SOS timing 6.7 seconds. Is that the full duration of it? Hmm. Uh, and the thing can switch. It can operate from uh, up to 5 volts and it can switch up to 2 amps. I did test it. Oh, right. It says, it says 300 degrees Celsius here for some reason. Is that like... I don't know. Um, certainly when I measured it uh, thermally while it was running at full output at the, with a the equivalent of a full set of alkaline cells. The chip got to about 50 degrees Celsius. This resistor, rather unsurprisingly, because it is a, it's dropping all the current, the difference between the battery and the LED voltage, uh, it got to 100 degrees Celsius, which is nothing really to actually be concerned about these, particularly given it's mounted on a nice heat sink. The LEDs themselves are absolutely full whack, went up to about 50 degrees Celsius. I suppose ultimately after a while it would heat this plate up and then it would stabilise. It could get quite hot. It's right behind the batteries. I don't know if that would really affect them much. Hmm, don't know. Uh, that was with uh, emulated 4.5 volts fresh alkalines. The voltage, the batteries would probably have internal resistance and also I'd recommend using this with the rechargeable cells. So I'm not sure what these two pads are for. They're effectively across the LEDs. It's odd, it deviates from the manufacturer's guideline here in the sense that the resistor, instead of putting the resistor in series with the LED like they've done there, they've actually put the resistor in series with the negative connection to the battery. Um, I suppose that has the advantage that it's not The chip's not going to be too bothered by that, but it means if the chip failed and went dead short circuit, it's not going to short the batteries out. This is going to be there to limit the current and it'll probably blow like a fuse. Don't know. Things worthy of note. I have checked the pinout. Although in the data here it just shows the middle pin here as being the ground connection, all the pins were connected just together. And I've noticed that another... I saw another device that used the same chip. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was marked YN890 as well. And it had all those pins connected together as well. I guess maybe it's just heat sinking? Not really sure. Um, but it only needs to be the middle pin. The other pins tally up. Uh, that's the positive pin up there. The middle pin is the button. And then the bottom one here is the one that's going to the LEDs. And when it goes down to the LEDs, there are visible 
bus bars going inside this at the top and bottom. It's fairly typical. Anything else worth saying about this? Not really. The reason there are a screw hole here and here and here, three screw holes, which seems quite a, kind of generous, is that the, these ones are to hold the LEDs against the little plastic reflector and keep it pushed in place in the front of the light. And I'm guessing this one is just for extra rigidity for when you're pushing the button against this, uh, against this little clicky switch in here. But overall, oh, currents. At 3.6 volts, that's a set of nickel metal hydride cells, the high setting was drawing just short of 300 milliamps. The low setting was about 77 milliamps, which equates to the 25%. And the strobe was a 50-50 duty cycle. It was 150 milliamps. At 4.5 volts, it was 600 milliamps at full 147, so say 150-ish. Uh, at the low setting, which is 25% again, and then 290, which is more or less 50% when it was strobing. Interesting stuff. It's a nice construction, I have to say. It's so slim and so lightweight, it really is incredibly light, that uh, as an emergency backup flashlight, it's not bad at all. It puts out plenty of light. Even with the nickel metal hydride cells in their lower voltage, it puts out a good punch of light, um, both at the full setting and at the 25%. That's pretty good. Uh, I quite like this. It's a nice design, and I'm guessing that this cob a ray, not cob array, well this is a cob LED but it's all mounted in the one aluminium substrate. I guess this will be finding its way into other products as well. It's an interesting way of doing it. It increases the heat sinking area and also gets all the other components onto one very simple flat circuit board that allows it to be put in a very low profile light. I like this. It's quite neat.